So here's a question. Is Linux Mint Debian underrated? Even the word underrated is a little overrated these days, uh, I gotta be honest, but Linux Mint Debian Edition has been one of those distributions that's chugged away almost silently in the background. It doesn't get an awful lot of promotion here and there. Debian is something of a legend in the desktop Linux world. It's kind of the granddaddy of all desktop friendly Linux distros. And out of Debian came Ubuntu, out of Ubuntu came Mint, and then Mint decided if they ever wanted to screw Ubuntu completely, they could jump back to Debian. And hence, this is where Linux Mint Debian Edition came from. Now, according to the Mint team, there were three main advantages, or I guess caveats, that came with the Linux Mint Debian Edition. First of all, it was considered to be faster and more responsive than the Ubuntu-based Linux Mint. It was also incumbent upon the end user to have a little more knowledge about the Linux world and Debian package management specifically, and also that there would be a couple of rough edges here or there. But as the fifth release of Linux Mint Debian Edition came out, Elsie? Elise? Elsie came out back in March of 2022, I thought it might be time to give it a good spin. So that's what I've done. Okay, so what does the Debian edition of Linux Mint give you that the mainline doesn't? Surprisingly, the differences are very small. It is significant though to note that the version of the Cinnamon desktop that you get in Linux Mint Debian edition is always just that bit behind what the mainline release of Linux Mint has. So what I mean by that is that the upcoming Linux Mint 21 release is gonna be a new code base based on the Ubuntu 22.04 long-term support release. And that will have with it the Cinnamon desktop 5.4. Now, as you can see in an up-to-date version of the Debian edition, we have Cinnamon 5.2. Now, what does that actually translate to in terms of real world performance? Well, it, it goes back and forth. While Cinnamon 5.4 is uh, a significant rewrite in terms of the window manager and uh, based on a new Mutter code base, and that's meant to bring performance uh, improvements, in, in terms of day-to-day -day use, uh, you are unlikely to notice any visible difference uh, it is still using tried and true technologies in terms of Xorg as a display manager, and it is using a largely GTK Mutter based widget kit and window management stack. But as we all know by now, the Cinnamon desktop is incredibly mature and the, the features and uh, improvements that do get added to Cinnamon over time do make their way to the Debian edition regardless. It just means you're a little bit further behind. It's also worth mentioning that the installer that Linux Mint Debian Edition uses is different to the installer that's been used for a long time with Ubuntu based releases. And I actually found it really pleasant to use. It is more technical, just slightly, than the installer that comes standard on most Ubuntu releases. But the default seems safe enough and sane enough that uh, it definitely is a breeze compared to installing Debian as it's available from Debian.org. And the other thing that I do want to mention is driver management. Now, with the mainline edition of Linux Mint, you usually get an option to be able to install drivers uh, from the installer straight out of the box. And this can include proprietary NVIDIA drivers and things of that nature. It is less forthcoming in the Debian installer. Now, all of these packages still exist. Obviously, uh, Debian have a lot of these drivers uh, available in their repositories. Unlike the mainline edition of Linux Mint, you don't get a custom driver management tool to be able to uh, handle these things through a GUI tool, at least not to my knowledge. Again, if it's hiding somewhere, uh, let me know in the comments. And depending on how recent your NVIDIA card is, you might notice that the, uh, the NVIDIA card cuts out at the 470 series, and some of these might not get updated as quickly or as frequently as what they do on the Ubuntu releases. But I have, haven't got a recent Nvidia card, so you'd have to go and check that one out for yourself. Now, what doesn't change though, is you still get access to all of the wonderful Mint tools that have made Linux Mint a household name in the Linux space. So that includes the wonderful welcome screen that debuted on a few Mint versions ago and uh, including changing uh, accent colors, dark mode, all of that kind of stuff. What kind of panel layout you wanna have, system snapshots through time shift, which has obviously been taken on by the Mint team as a project. We obviously also have the update manager from Linux Mint which on a rolling release like Debian, uh, it is imperative that you have a 
a strong update manager to be able to handle these bits and pieces. And the fact that it has really excellent integration with TimeShift means that if something does go wrong with your system, it's very easy to back out and restore from what you had prior. Now, one thing that I will mention here is that it is interesting to note that the uh, that the option to change kernels here is not as forthcoming. Now, I don't know if this is owing to the fact that the uh, kernels are packaged by Debian and they may not have the flexibility there that they do with Ubuntu in terms of its hardware enablement stack. But ironically enough, the default Linux kernel that you get currently as of the time of the recording of this video in the mainline Linux Mint 20.3 release is the 5.4 kernel series, which is incredibly old. Uh, nowadays, with the hardware enablement stack, I believe 20.04 Ubuntu releases are sitting on a 5.13 kernel series. I could be wrong about that. And you can see the Debian version sits somewhere in the middle there with a 5.10 uh, kernel series package from Debian. Now, all this is to say that down the road, as uh, as Mint Debian uh, continues, security updates come through the kernel, but a more up-to-date kernel is gonna have to be something that you manage on your own. And, uh, and that's gonna be important for you if you are somebody who runs more up-to-date hardware. Uh, I'm thinking about the 6000 Ryzen series, 12th gen Intel, a lot of those newer um, architectures do rely on a more up-to-date kernel. So it's just a caveat that you have to be aware of. You will run an older kernel on Debian. Ironically though, not nearly as old as the default kernel that comes in uh, the mainline Ubuntu uh, based Linux Mint series. The drawback, is that here in Debian, you don't get the tools or at least the simple tools to be able to install a better or more up-to-date kernel version smoothly. I don't really need to labor the point that Mint has been building out a gradual selection of simple uh, software to include on their ISO. This is in an effort to trim down the amount of dependencies that the Mint desktop needs out of the box, but it also is designed to give the new user a, a pretty solid experience. So whether it's a media player, internet TV, web browser, email, even a little tool to be able to manage your web apps, all of this remains consistent across the main release of Linux Mint and the Debian edition, which is really fun to see you would be hard pressed to tell the surface differences between the two distributions. System usage is about what you would expect in a distribution of this uh, level of feature richness and full, uh, I guess, full fat desktop window manager. Is this lighter than the Ubuntu based Linux Mint? In my experience, yes, but marginally, it's, uh, it doesn't make as much difference as you would think. And I tend to think that nowadays, because of the fact that the Cinnamon desktop has been so optimized over time, that they managed to eke out a surprising amount of performance from the mainline Ubuntu release compared to when uh, the Mint Debian edition first launched. Now, it is also worth mentioning that the upgrade cycle from Debian 4 uh, or Linux Mint Debian edition 4 to LMDE 5 uh, used to be that that jump between major releases used to be quite a hassle, but now the Mint team have brought together a uh, a custom OS updater tool, and again, it's one of those small touches that improves quality of life for the long run, and it means that when you install Debian, uh, the the Linux Mint Debian edition, you can have longevity in mind, in that you can really settle into this system. You can set up the update cycle, you can set up and customize the backup, both on a system and a user level cycle, and you have a custom tool that debuted in its final form uh, to be able to upgrade users from the LMDE 4 to version 5. And naturally, this tool will also make its way to the mainline release, where it'll complement uh, users to update from Linux Mint 20.3 to Linux Mint 21. These are the sorts of tools and tweaks that desktop users really need to be able to get the most out of their system in the long run. Not just a great first impression, but a great lived in experience of an OS. Now, the only other criticism that I need to uh, make people aware of if they're going into using the Linux Mint Debian edition is the fact that you will be dealing with a slightly outdated package base. Uh, at least on the deb packages front. Now, as we all know, Flatpak exists. 
and the Linux Mint software manager does allow you to install stuff from FlatHub, which is enabled out of the box, but it's not always the most forthcoming or the most performant in my experience. Now, a lot of this could be due to just the fact that the software manager itself is getting on in years, uh, but it could also be to do with uh, the mirrors that it pulls the Debian packages from, and obviously FlatHub works completely differently in terms of uh, where it downloads packages from. But it is a bit of a blink and you'll miss it. And most users will be uh, used to installing things through a software center where they come in and they just choose from the curated list uh, here available in the software manager. But all of these pieces of software, while they are ranked and rated and have reviews and all that kind of thing, uh, these will be out of date versions. For example, Geary, which is a popular GTK based uh, email client is sitting at the 3.38 version as opposed to uh, the newer GNOME 42 based version. Uh, and you'll find this across the board. Uh, Thunderbird, for example, is several versions behind here at version 91 where they have a monumental uh, 100 or 102 release, I think, uh, which is a huge improvement. So it is worth pursuing the flat pack option uh, but the problem is is that you lose any sense of categorization when you come into Flatpak. These are coming from FlatHub and you will get much more up-to-date software going down this route but Mint doesn't do a great job of surfacing that to the user letting them know that they can find better more up-to-date software through Flatpak. It might be because the Mint team have reservations about uh, pushing Flatpak as a primary package management system. Flatpak can get quite disk greedy over time. And so uh, on a Debian based system, in a pursuit to keep it as light as possible, they might want to actively uh, encourage people to use Debian packages instead of going down the flat pack route. But for those who know where to find it, it's here and you can get up to date versions of whatever software you're looking for. I think ultimately people should go and try uh, Linux Mint Debian uh, because in so many ways it gives users exactly what they want uh, without any of the cruft and without any of the release cadence shenanigans that get brought on by uh, Ubuntu releases. Now, Ubuntu releases are fantastic and the experimentation that goes on between LTS releases is important. And the very concept of an LTS release is also important. But for those that want to have a stable, no nonsense, performant desktop, based on Debian that is a curated and looked after experience from start to finish, then Linux Mint Debian 5 is a really great option. With the main two caveats that getting up to date software, both on the kernel level to support more up to date hardware is something that you're going to have to manage on your own and managing more up to date software is something that's going to have to be done almost exclusively through Flatpak. Uh, as the software ages. So what do you think about the Linux Mint Debian edition? Is it underrated? When was the last time you checked it out? Let me know your experiences down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with more in the lightweight Linux series soon. Catch you all in the next one.